Good morning. <laughs> Are you guys there? 6.59. I made some super strong coffee this morning. You needed it. Super duper. I don't drink coffee, <laughs> so uh, I wish I did. I could use some coffee you this could, morning. You, yeah, my hubby did get a lot of sleep last I night, guys. I didn't sleep guys. last night, so, uh, yeah. but I'm happy to be here. Happy to be in the Word with y'all. Happy to be seeing everybody. For sure. Good to see you, Tanner. Good morning. You are the first up this morning. Richard Anderson, our friend. Good to see you. Becky, good. Hope Mike's feeling better. Jennifer Potts, Melissa Morgan. Who else is out there? Let's see. All right. Tracy Martin. Lamuel from India. Hello, my friend. God bless you guys. What time is it there, Lamuel? Yeah, Let's Lamuel, know. what time is it there? I'm curious. It's 7. It's, it's in the evening for it's sure. It's got to be like 10 hours ahead, I yeah. think. Gracie, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Alice Pewitt. Hi, Alice. Good to see you. Our sweet buddy. All right, all right, all right. All right, here we are. Faith, not fear. This is day six. We're starting a new week this week. Today is Monday. Ooh, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? August 10th, 2020. Gotta push through. Gotta push through. <laughs> we want to remind everybody to like and heart and comment so that we can get the word out. We want you to share. When this is over, I'm going to remind you again. Take 30 seconds, man. Mm -hmm. Write a little sentence or two and share this with your people. Help get the word out. So here we go. We've been talking about faith, not fear, because we live in a day where we need more faith and less fear. Fear is too rampant, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to see faith arise in people's hearts. Faith comes by hearing God's word, and so we've been digging into God's word mm -hmm. and watching faith arise in our heart. Uh, we've been going through Hebrews chapter 11, if you're just joining us for this for the first time. And um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. And we've kind of amplified and expanded that definition uh, to say it like this. Faith is the substance, it is the foundation and the pillar of things that we're hoping and waiting for. Mm -hmm. It is the evidence, the conviction, and the confidence that unseen things will become seen realized and experienced. So there you go. Faith. This is the only definition of faith in the entire Bible is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now today we're going to continue on. We're going to be talking about Abraham and Isaac and this is one of those stories where it can be approached from I mean just a bajillion mm -hmm. different angles and really uh, this person I'm just telling you I struggled today with which angle to take as it relates to uh, faith and, and conquering fear and stuff. So I think I've got something that's going to help us today. We cannot look at Hebrews 11, 17 through 19 without reading Genesis chapter 22. Now listen to me, verses 1 through 18. I know this isn't a, a big long teaching. This is supposed to be devotional in nature and reading 18 verses for a devotion is kind of against devotion rules, <laughs> but uh, we have to do it. And so here we go. Let me read to you Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 18. If you have your Bibles there, open it up and uh, we're going to get the backdrop for this story that we're going to unpack from Hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 through 19. All right, here we go. Genesis 22. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Pastor Steve, did you say to offer your own son as a burnt offering? That's what it says. And he loves him. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. 
the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Remember that word we. We will come back to you. It's the, it's the turning part of this whole story, that little word we, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withhold your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, now listen, beloved, listen to these words. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice mm -hmm. all right now friends here we go Hebrews chapter 11 just three verses 11, uh, excuse me, 17 through 19, Sarah. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he had also received him in a figurative sense. All right, so here you go. Let me, let me just unpack this now. Abraham received Isaac as a miracle child. Mm -hmm. Abraham was promised by God when he was 75 years old that, that he would have an heir. He was childless at the time, that he would have an heir. Mm -hmm. 25 years pass. Yeah. Abraham is 100, Sarah is 90 before Isaac the miracle promised child is born. So we, we have to get that. Isaac is a miracle. God provided a miracle for him after a 25 year long promise. Mm -hmm. Now in this story, God is asking for Isaac back. You have to remember, you, you cannot just read this story from our side of things. You have to put yourself in the story as Abraham. And God is saying to Abraham, I need you to sacrifice mm -hmm. your own son. He's got to be a burnt offering for me. And, and Abraham fully gets it because it says that he went to slay his son. Mm -hmm. So God is asking for Isaac back. He's asking for Abraham to make a sacrificial offering. Now, here's another thing I think we get misconstrued about this story. Because the word lad is used, mm -hmm. we think that, you know, that Isaac was just a wee little kid, you know, maybe five or six years old. Listen to me, friends. He was at least in his late teens, even into his mid-twenties. In fact, there are some scholars that say he was as old as 36. We're talking about a young man at least. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a father who's about to give his son that he did life with. Mm -hmm. 
for just, let's just say 20, 25 years, okay? God is asking for Isis, Isaac back for a sacrificial offering to be made by Abraham of this young man. And Abraham obeys. Abraham obeys what God tells him to do. Why? Because Abraham believes that God will give Isaac back to him mm -hmm. miraculously. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Abraham is fully expecting to go through with the horrendous, horrific act of sacrifice, but simultaneously he's saying, as, as hard and sacrificial as this is gonna be, I fully believe mm -hmm. that God will miraculously return to me mm -hmm. what he miraculously gave to me mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah. That's faith and trust galore. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we know that, that he believed that, that God would return? Because he said, remember in Genesis 22, the lad and I are going to go up and worship and we. we will return. He knew that even if he killed him, God would resurrect him and they would return to the two servants. Yeah. And it says in Hebrews 11, that by faith, Abraham did this, mm -hmm. knowing that God would resurrect him if he had to. Yeah. So listen, as sacrificial as this is, and it's very, it's sacrificial on every level, yeah. relationally, emotionally. I mean, you can't imagine the trauma of this moment. And yet Abraham believes that God will give him back miraculously. Why? Because God had promised that Isaac was the seed that all of the other generations would come from. Mm -hmm. Isaac had to remain alive. He had to. So God was gonna to have to do something miraculous, okay? This is heavy stuff here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, um, <clears throat> the scripture comes to my mind a lot because Keith Green put it to lyric years ago. Yeah. But in 1 Samuel 15, um, starting at 22, Samuel said to Saul, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. And then he goes on to say rebellion is like witchcraft, yeah. you know, to not be obedient to the yeah. Lord. So, you know, putting just that much more perspective on it, God is more about us being obedient to his voice. Um, the byproduct of that is usually sacrifice. Right. You know, um, because why would we not be obedient to right. his voice if it was just happy go lucky? Right. You know what I mean? There's usually sacrifice that's going to play into that part. And yeah. but, but it's important to say what he's saying there is just the ritualistic, disingenuous, yeah, going like, through the motions religion. Yeah. He's not downplaying sacrifice yeah. at all. Yeah. It's, it's obedience and sacrifice together, which yeah. is what Abraham demonstrated for mm -hmm. us that's so important. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, so let me just give you some things to think about here, okay? You know, these are just some take-homes for you. And, and again, I'm, 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 not, I'm just telling you what I know to be true and what's been real in, in our life, okay? It's really, really not just possible that probable that as you follow Jesus, that God is going to ask you to give something back to him mm -hmm. that he miraculously gave you in the first place. Yeah. And it's a time of testing, it's a, it's a time of trial. But there's gonna be a time when God asks you to give him something back that he gave you in the first place. Mm -hmm. Why? So that he can give you more later. This is how this works, man. This is the economy of God. This yeah. is contrary to the world. Mm -hmm. This is really, really important for us to get a handle on. God says to Abraham, give me Isaac. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'm gonna give you descendants like the stars in the sky, the sands on the seashore, and in you, every nation mm -hmm. will be blessed. Yeah. God doesn't ask us to sacrifice just for the point of sacrifice. God asks us to sacrifice for the purpose of increase yeah. in us, for us, and through us. Gosh, I, I, I want to be able to communicate this well, but what I just realized is that, you know, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Isaac is a part of um, Abraham's literal DNA. 
and has had relationship with him. And so, you know, for those of us listening to this study right now, I wonder if the Lord might be saying, is there something, is, is there something you've had relationship with that is literally a part of your character, a part of your DNA that the Lord would have you to lay down yep. and offer him? We're going to yeah. get there. We're going to get there. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Okay. Now, this issue of God asking us to give things back to him that he's first given us, this, this is throughout the scriptures. So look at it like this. God has given every single one of us natural life. Mm -hmm. And what does he ask us to do? He asks us to give that natural life back to him. Mm -hmm. Why? So that he can give us abundant, everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Again, he gives us something, he asks for it back so that he can increase us and give us more, all right? Um, we see this in the, in the realm of finances, which is something that so many people struggle with. God provides finances for us. He asks back for a tithe or an, and an offering. Mm -hmm. Why? So that we can then live under an open heaven and he mm -hmm. can pour out blessing on us that we mm -hmm. can't contain. So our cup will overflow. Yeah. See, he gives, he asks for it back as an act of faith, mm -hmm. and then it's for the purpose of him increasing and multiplying us. Mm -hmm. it, it's all throughout the scripture. You, you see it, men, I, I thought about you this morning. Let me talk to you married men for a second. The scripture says that we are to love our wives like Christ loves the church in Ephesians 5 and 25. And, and what's, the, what's the purpose of that? Jesus loved the church sacrificially. So... Paul says, men, love your wives sacrificially, okay? You're giving. And then what are you getting back, he said? A bride without spot, regular blemish. Mm -hmm. There is that increase. There's that multiplication. There is that blessing through the obedient sacrifice. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's all over the scripture. But because, and what you were saying a minute ago, be, because sacrifice is, is sacrifice like it's not sacrifice without cost mm -hmm. if you think you're sacrificing and it's not costing you it's not sacrifice mm -hmm. so god throughout the scripture says listen i'm going to give you something i'm going to ask you for all of it or part of it back but the purpose is so you can learn to trust me for more mm -hmm. and experience more in your life mm -hmm. so let me let me say it like this faith that fuels sacrificial obedience is the key to multiplied blessing. It just is. Let me, let me say that again to you. Faith that fuels sacrificial obedience is the key to multiplied blessing. It's all throughout the scripture. This is how the economy of God actually works, all right? Now, let me give you another thing to consider here. Just a couple things. We've got to make sure that we don't cherish a fulfilled promise more than we cherish continued sacrificial obedience. Mm -hmm. Because what happens? We finally get the promise. Yes, the promise comes through. I've got it. It's mine. I'm enjoying it. It's incredible and awesome. And God asks for it back or a part of it back. And we go, no. No, I'm enjoying this too much. I've been waiting and I finally got it. God, please don't ask for it back. Don't do that. I love this too much. Mm -hmm. Friends, we've got to make sure that we don't cherish fulfilled promises more than we do continued sacrificial obedience. Mm -hmm. I said it like this as well. Faith doesn't fear losing what God miraculously gave you but fear refuses to release it for a miraculous multiplied return. Mm -hmm. See, that's faith over fear then. Yeah. Faith, faith doesn't fear losing what God miraculously provided. Mm -hmm. Abraham's operating in faith. He, he's, he knows that God miraculously provided. He knows that God will miraculously return it. Mm -hmm. But fear is the thing that refuses to release it because it, it can't believe yeah. for a miraculous multiplied return. Yeah, I'm super, I mean, you could probably tell, but I'm super contemplative today because it's a, it's a tender week for one, because it's the anniversary of our Saya going to heaven this week. Um, but secondly, the things that me as a, as a wife, as a mom, 
that the Lord has asked me to sacrifice are super tender places. Um, and in a nutshell, I would say the, the biggest deal he asked us, we, me, to sacrifice a few years ago was to move from a house that held super sentimental value to us. And he spoke to us, it, he spoke to me, he spoke to Steve, and, and we in obedience went, we don't know what this means. We might be moving to another city, we might be moving in town, but I trust you. I mean, those are, that seems so trivial compared to sacrificing a son, but these things are all super duper important to the Lord. Your hearts, ladies, those sentimental places that you hold so dear that he's asking you to sacrifice, you need to believe that God will replenish what he's asking you to release to release and I had to it's just like okay I trust you you know my heart you know my makeup you know what would make me hyperventilate you know it <laughs> would bring anxiety like Jesus I'm trusting you to match my heart up to wherever it is that you're asking us to move and to this day I reflect and just go that was that was a big deal to my heart um, anyhow, so I would just encourage you because we have so much relationship with our homes and, and, and family environments. And I wonder if the Lord might be challenging some of you out there to, to just trust him and what the future brings in yeah. regards to those sentimental places. It's good. You cannot, we cannot hold on to the fulfillment more than we hold on to the Father. Yeah. We just can't. We can't start idolizing the fulfilled promise mm -hmm. and refuse to release it if God causes us to. Yeah. Because if we refuse to release whatever that mm -hmm. fulfilled, valuable, cherished promise is, mm -hmm. if, we, if we move into idolatry of that thing, mm -hmm. man, we are not positioning ourselves for a miraculous yeah. multiplied return. Yeah. We are positioning ourselves for regret. It, for regret. Yeah. We're positioning mm -hmm. ourselves in stagnancy and not mm -hmm. growing in faith. Yeah. Man, we just can't do it. So yeah. here's the questions, two questions that Sarah kind of started a bit earlier, okay? Question number one, is God asking you to sacrifice something he gave you miraculously so he can return it in a miraculous multiplied way? Mm -hmm. Maybe he is right now, maybe he's not, but I can promise you this, at some point in your life of following Jesus, it's going to happen. And it's not a one and done. This is the economy. The kingdom of God works this way. Yeah. Is God asking you to sacrifice something that he gave you miraculously mm -hmm. so he can return it to you in a miraculous multiplied way? Mm -hmm. It's a question to answer. Second question, are you holding on to a fulfilled promise more than you're holding on to the Father? Mm -hmm. Has that thing that was a promise, has it become an idol? Have you hunkered down and just latched onto it? Because it's finally here. Man. Yeah, there's so much. The, you know, and with, with Rue teaching on heaven right now, like, and what we've studied earlier in um, Hebrews 11 is, you know, there are folks that went to heaven never having received the promise on this end. But we have to remember again that we're eternal and that on the other side in heaven, our dreams and promises that may not be fulfilled on this side will ultimately be fulfilled in heaven. God's gonna take care of it. He's gonna take care of it. Right. Can I, this is a snippet story, but Jimmy yeah. Harrison, I mean, this just impacted me so much. His dad went to heaven a year or two ago and his dad had shared with him before he went to heaven that one of his biggest regrets was not building a cabin to fish. And Jimmy was like, Dad, we'll do that in the kingdom, you know? So I just wanna encourage you that the things that aren't fulfilled on this side that we could be so anxious about, like God, far better, <laughs> will fulfill those things in heaven. Yes. For those who trust him. Yeah. It's, it's been said, story. that heaven is the repayment of earth's lost privileges. There you go. Heaven is the repayment of earth's lost privileges. Mm -hmm. Anyway, beloved, so talking about sacrifice, man, you can't talk about sacrifice without talking about Jesus. Yeah. 
who came, had life, the father asked for his life, and what was the result of it? A miraculous multiplied blessing. Yeah. Save the world yeah. through sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So uh, just consider sacrifice, what that might look like for you right here, right now, today, uh, in the seasons to come, whatever it is. Well, let's have communion together and celebrate Jesus. the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we do that? Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are humbled beyond description that you loved us enough that you sacrificed your own son so that he could be the first of many brethren. <laughs> so that he could be the first, the first fruits of the resurrection, so that he would be the first to lead many, many, many sons and daughters to glory. Thank you for what the sacrifice of Jesus has produced for us. Thank you for what it teaches us and how we should now live Father, thank you for the broken body and the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. May his sacrifice, O oh God, be an example to us of our own sacrifice in the things you're asking for. We commit our hearts to you afresh today. Wonderful God, loving Father, we commit our hearts to you afresh today. Have your will in your way. And may this bread and this cup today be health and strength and life to us and our loved ones. God bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's partake together, dear friends. All right, all right. Well, God bless you guys. Have a fantastic day today. On this Monday, August 10th, share, 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 help us get the word out. Maybe somebody out there today that you're going to send this to really, really needs to hear it. And so why don't you sacrifice and send this to as many people as you can. God bless you. We love you and bless you in the name of Jesus. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you tomorrow morning, August 11th. God bless you guys.